Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a radical exponential equation. We have the cube root of x to the power x equals square root of x to the power square root of x. So we have the cube root, the square root, and the exponentials. So I'm going to go ahead and show you the solution method. And then at the end, we're going to look at a graph. So first of all, before we get started, try to make a guess on how many solutions we're going to get. Record that number and then we'll see if it's verified. I'm not saying find the solutions and I'm pretty sure some of you, maybe most of you found an obvious solution, but we're going to find all solutions. Are there any complex solutions? I don't know. Maybe uh, we'll see. Okay. So let's go ahead and write the left hand side as since it's the cube root as x to the power x over three, right? We can do that. When anytime you have the cube root of something for real numbers, you can write it as something to the power one third because of the x inside, we multiply by that. And the right hand side is basically the square root of x, which is x to the power one half, and then that to the power square root of x. You don't need to write this as x to the power something because you'll see it's not necessary. That's going to be multiplied by one half and then set it equal to x over three. Okay? So now we can go ahead and follow the rules. This is going to be x to the power one half times the square root of x. And as you can see here, if the bases are equal, the exponents should also be equal, right? Well, let's do the following. This is kind of like a safer route. Sometimes people are going to, you know, ln both sides or log both sides. I guess that would be another way to approach it. But anyways, let's just talk about the first approach or first method first. We can go ahead and divide both sides by x to the power one half root x. Let's go ahead and do that. Divide both sides by the right hand side. And that's going to give you a one on one side, which is good. And here on the left, we need to subtract the exponents, right? Because the bases are the same. So this gives us one. This is good because when you have one with the real scenario, then we have a limited number of cases. What are those cases? Let's talk about it. So whenever you have a to the b equals one, this means either a is one and we don't really care about b, b can be anything, or a is equal to negative one and b must be even, which means it's also supposed to be an integer. And the third case scenario is a should not be zero, but b should be zero. We need this requirement because when you have zero to the power zero, that's not equal to one, as far as I know. Okay, you could disagree. Now, these are the cases. Let's go ahead and apply each and every one of these to our equation, okay? So our equation is, one more time, x to the power x over three minus one half root x equals one. So a is x, b is the exponent. Make sense? Now let's go ahead and look at each case, and I'm gonna number these, number one, number two, and number three. First case number one, the simplest one, x equals one. Done. Easy, right? You don't care about the exponent because you don't. One raised to any power is always one. Great. Well, we're kind of keeping it real here, right? When you go to complex world, one to the power something can be negative one. And let's use a different variable. So we kind of want to imply the complexity of the number. We could get something like this, right? This doesn't look possible, but with complex numbers, pretty much everything is possible. Anyways, let's go back to real life. X equals one is the first case. Great. Now the second one is going to be X equals negative one and and is required here, by the way, X to the power X over three minus one half root X equals. I'm sorry, the exponent was supposed to be not the whole thing x over 3 minus 1 half of root x is even. Now, when x is negative 1, this is not even well defined in the real world. So, this case is going to be dismissed. Case dismissed. Bam. Number 3. Okay, number 3 is exponent is 0, base is not 0. So, x does not equal 0, but I do want x over 3 minus 1 half of root x to be equal to 0. So that I have some non-zero number to the power zero equals one. Make sense? Cool. So this basically implies that, okay, two to the zero, it doesn't imply, but 
Some examples could be 2 to the power 0 equals 1, 1 third to the power 0 equals 1, 1 billion to the power 0 equals 1. Negative 3.5868910, whatever, to the power 0 is 1. So how do you solve this problem? Let's go ahead and there's a couple of ways to do this. We can first of all add it to both sides and then square both sides. Obviously, you've got to be careful because x needs to be positive. When you square both sides, you're going to get x squared over 9 equals 1 fourth of x. At, in this, like, at this point, x equals 0 pops up, but you have to reject it. So we can divide both sides by x safely. So if you do, you're going to get x equals 9 over 4 which I think is 2.25, right? Makes sense? Okay, so that looks like a good solution, but is there another solution? No, because that's the only one we got after dismissing the x equals 0. You could also solve this problem a little differently, like x over 3 minus 1 half of square root of x equals 0. You can take out a square root of x, and then you're going to get square root of x over 3 minus 1 half is equal to 0. Square root of x cannot be 0 because x cannot be 0. Therefore, this needs to be 0. Square root of x over 3 is 1 half. Square root of x is 3 halves. And then x is 9 fourths. It, it, in this case, squaring both sides is okay. It, okay. it does not introduce extraneous solutions. Make sense? Okay. So those are pretty much the cases that we need to check. Are there any other solutions? I don't think so. But if you wanted to look at an alternative approach here, you could probably just go with ln. Let me quickly show you what you can do with that. After writing it, I think, uh, as x to the power x over 3 and x to the power square root of x over 2, you can basically ln both sides and then use the power rule, bring this to the front, x over 3 ln x equals square root of x over 2 ln x, then put, put it together and then you can kind of uh, factor out an ln x, so it's going to look like this. x over 3 minus square root of x over 2, all multiplied by ln x equals 0. ln x equals 0 implies x equals 1, and that's something that we got, didn't we? I think that was the first thing we got. Yes, x equals 1 is the first obvious solution. And the other solution is going to come from... This equation right here, x over 3 equals root x over 2. As before, you're going to get x equals 9 fourths, as before. So there are two real solutions. Now, can we find complex solutions to this equation? That's a good question to ask, something to think about. I don't think there are any complex solutions, but I could definitely be wrong on that. Don't trust me. And here's the graph of these two functions. They are kind of radical, but at the same time exponential, and they intersect at two points, x equals 1 and x equals 2.25. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.